Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Medieval Engineers. In the last episode we started work on our wonderful commercial district and it's going to house many a different things from just general stores to specific crafting professions. Um, we're just walking through what we did yesterday real quick and I'm going to show you just two little structures that I built in between episodes. So this small one over here this is just some sort of small storage shed, uh, something small just to fit the space that it's in. It could even be used with guards. It could be a small guard uh, barracks if you want it to be. It can be whatever you want. It's just filling in area and trying to be useful in that sense. I think it's pretty quaint and nice. And then right across from it here we have our general store. And as you can see we have a nice little physics enabled sign here. Uh, not much on the inside besides our countertop. All the stores are probably going to be pretty much like this except for the crafting professions. Just again to keep lag down and everything. So, uh, But the countertop turned out pretty nice. Um, it's pretty standard of a shape. Normally there would be shelves with like goods and items on it in here as well. And also a bunch of stuff back here. It does have an upper floor for more uh, bulk storage. Uh, maybe the guy could live up here technically, but I would like to think that he would just commute from a home from the residential district rather than actually living above his store. I mean, we're going to have a big enough space in homes. I would think people wouldn't have to live over here. If we head on up to the next tier, we have just one of the plateaus and we're gonna be working on these small stalls today. And these are just, you know, uh, basic, it could be food stalls for all, all I know. And we have, you know, a nice viewing area, of course. Some nice archways just to add some detail. And then the main wing that we're at least going to start. I don't know how far we're going to get into it this episode. Is the uh, weapons district. And so the weapons district, it's going to have the blacksmith, the fletchery for archery. It's going to have uh, the weapons and armor. I guess I could say it's more of the the combat district rather than just weapons if they're going to be armor and, as well. Um, so you're going to be able to find your leather working here. You're going to be able to find uh, metal working. Uh, your uh, woodworking for your, your bows. And uh, I don't know what else really what could fit at least in the given space that we have and uh, what other professions you guys might want to see. We're definitely not going to get to all of those professions just on this first kind of pass um, because I, I still need to like level out the terrain as you can see what I'm doing now to try and make area that we can actually build on. And so I'm gonna try and cut the road here hugging the mountainside and all the structures on the outside being supported somehow kind of overhanging off of uh, the rock face itself. But the first thing we have to do is actually build a rock face to, well, call home. So let's see, did I just ruin this at all? No, looks like that was okay. Let's go ahead and switch to the capsule shape. It's always, it's always the best for doing these type of things because it's very vertical. Um, and then we will kind of leave the top a little barren and then use the flat tool to raise that up to match. But until then, the capsule is pretty much always the best to use for sculpting terrain. At least it's what I prefer to use. I doubt there's really a wrong way to do it. Just as long as you're comfortable and have decent control. Um, so that's all you're looking for when you're doing this kind of stuff. And then also I'm going to try and make it look a little bit more rocky in general. And a little bit more detailed with our design so I can do some nice rock faces, uh, different grasses types to break up the surface. So you can see kind of how 
natural this cliff face is starting to look just from adding uh, this light detail that we have here. And just the more the more you add, the better. Everything is just done in layers, and the more layers you have, the more detailed it looks, and the more detailed it looks, uh, the more believable. But sometimes, you know, it's not so much about the detail as just getting your your silhouettes correct. I think that looks pretty cool. Something like that. Nice flat top. Let's go ahead and see how that looks from over here. Not bad. We can put splotches of grass here and there and rock grass just so it's not as gray. Like this area here, we have some grass showing. And, you know, there would be grass growing on some of the flat areas for sure. So let's keep on just making this whole section wider. This is going to pretty much wrap all the way around and then close off on this side. So I've come to conclusion as well that uh, the little bit of lag that I'm getting is it's I'm sure partially caused by our physics enabled bridges and things like that. But then also, I mean, just the fact that our map is so large when it's trying to load in bunch of terrain so when we move across the map very quickly it, it's trying to load in all these voxels and so we're just gonna get a lag spike pretty much every time uh, we attempt to do that which you know it's to be expected really and keep on stacking Sometimes it's best to maybe even think of cliff faces initially just to get your rough shapes down. Almost like an ice cream cone. Uh, the way it kind of spirals upwards. And then you just take chunks away or add chunks here and there to make it look a little bit organic and uh, formed. So you can see if, if uh, I draw some lines here, like this is one part of the cone, this is another part, and then here's another one, and here's another one, and it will just keep going up in either a zigzag or a swirl pattern, and then we have parts that kind of overlap multiple layers and juts and things like that. So let's go ahead and give us a nice flat top to work with. Working with a complete flat top, and my phone rings. Is not 100% necessary, uh, but there's enough height variation and just the big space in general that I don't really uh, feel too bad making some flat areas like this. Oh, okay, that's that's too much. That's just uh, taking away too much there. Kind of wanted to make this look a little bit more vertical in this section to make it fit, but I uh, ended up kind of ruining it. And also to fit the roadway a little bit closer to the stone mountainside here. It's okay, it's fixable. Again, for me, it's easier to control our strokes here with just movements rather than uh, just trying to do it all with the mouse rather just move my character a little bit at a time and keep my uh, direction that I'm facing rather static. Now little things I will use my mouth, not my mouth, but my mouse, if I can speak today. Um, we'll just drag that, there we go. So that's looks okay. Yeah, that looks okay. Just okay by me. Let's go ahead and drop in I would say the road but we might have made the whole area a little high in that section. Let's use I guess a diagonal block here. get it as flush as possible 
it doesn't quite have to be perfectly too wide here. Uh, it just has to be a nice enough road that it makes sense. Then we need a curved piece of thing right here. And we can go with this there. And curve there. I know you guys probably saw a good bit of sculpting with the initial island creations, but this has to be done to move forward. It's just one of those things. All right, so there we go. Some more road. Which I could easily just make a road with a terrain, but I feel like this place is rich enough to just have a cobblestone path. In fact, I want that nice and smooth. Nice smooth line going that direction. So we're already about 10 minutes in. I'm going to go ahead and do these little stalls. Best I can here. So I'm going to start with these wooden slopes for roofing and then we're going to switch over to the windmill blades. If I can find them, there we go. Yep. So yeah, something like that to get kind of a nice curve going. Tomorrow I'll be uploading another episode of Star It has been a little bit since one was done. I feel a little bad about that, but for some reason I've been really, really feeling like working on this uh, or timber and stone rather than star made here recently, but I do need to get back into that because uh, I feel like people are enjoying that building though it feels like it takes me longer and I'm not quite as good with sci-fi Also at some point I need to hop back into space engineers, but you know, we'll, we'll see about that. I still have that Ship to finish. Alright, so we can do that and that. Let's drag this across just to give us a nice color change here. these in like that. Let's go ahead and fill this in. All right, that looks pretty cool. How about Man, I can never do what I want with the windmill blade sometimes. So let's have it connect by sitting on a beam right there. That might be okay. A little overhang's not bad. Say it's raining and you want to keep your customers nice and dry. We can do that. So touch a beam in the center 
In fact, we can build a whole kind of upper shelf. Not really a shelf, but an upper design here. Make it look nice and bulky and sturdy. That ain't bad. Not bad. Hmm. Tell you what, I'm gonna end up adding another cross member. I think right here. And then connect them to these. Like so. So uh, that's what one of these stalls looks like. It's nice and fairly spacious. Definitely an higher end stall than what I usually make. Connect that one and connect that one to support. Yeah, not bad. Plenty of space in them. Definitely easily fit some furniture. Let's just make this wrap around the corner. Make it flow all the way around. There we go. And so we're at 16 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and do some off-camera work. Maybe lay some foundations for our buildings. Try and get some sizing laid out. Probably the first one. Uh, this is probably going to be the metal working area. Just as close as possible to the entryway here. In the metal working area, it's really just gonna be the forge and blacksmith. Not so much the shop, it might be attached to a shop, but the metal working area is specifically for forging. And then the next building might be a fletchery and something to do with leather. Yeah, so see you guys here in a second. All right, guys, so it looks like I'm going to be leaving the episode here. Um, I just want to show you what both of these look like together. It, yeah, it looks pretty good. I might add some flags. In fact, I'm going to do that real quick. Just, just to see what this might look like if we... Come on. Can that fit one here very well? I guess not. Maybe on the underside. The underside doesn't look too bad. Let's make it look a little bit more decorative. And then over here, I worked a bit on some foundations. I'm not 100% sold on this yet. This is just a test to see if it will even fit the space. I'm probably gonna move the foundry over to this side because it's a little bit more sturdy and I can do a little uh, more of an interesting shape with it. But it's still gonna have the windmill uh, roof like fairly normal. Um, but this is definitely where the metal works is going to be and then I have some foundation over here marking out where the um, this is going to be the carpenter fletchery kind of woodworker area this small building is going to be for leather working and the way I'm going to be doing that is it's just going to have a small interior and then it's going to have a bit of a yard because leather working I mean it kind of toxic so they have a bit of a, a working space so they can definitely air it out fairly well and it will look pretty cool once we built this bridge this bridge right here is going to be a nice stone bridge uh, hopefully I can build enough supports for it we'll see how well that goes um, but it will be nice to have kind of a static bridge right here and then we'll have another static bridge on this side and then over here we'll just have a nice wooden uh, physical physics enabled one like normal anyway so that's the plan going forward uh, it's gonna you know as I said take a while to complete this whole island make all the details make it all fit some things will probably need to be work reworked uh, a couple times just to make sure the theme is all working and it has enough details um, like I said this this right here, I'm not 100% sold with. It's too much gray in this area. So I'm gonna switch maybe with the building on this side and do some wooden supports. So there's some brown mixed in to make it look all pretty. But yeah, things are moving along. 
and I hope you guys are enjoying the series as always. If you guys are enjoying the videos, feel free to subscribe to my channel for more creative goodness. Uh, you can check out my other series such as Timber and Stone, Star Made, uh, basically anything creative or survival creative is stuff that I play. Uh, leave a like, dislike, tell me what you guys think down below, and I'll see you guys in the next episode.